Springs. It's a gorgeous day today and a great day as is any day to worship the Lord, so please stand with us. morning about how we transition from the song of joy and celebration and singing I am free when we know that a lot of us are struggling right now including myself um, it's just been such a dark six months but I want to encourage you this morning I read this in my devotional 
We all know the Psalm 23, but just let the words speak to you. Let God speak to you through this. And just think about how relevant this all is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And right here, this is what really speaks to us all right now, right? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And this was straight from my devotional today, and this was the focus. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow each of you all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah.
take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever want my faith would be made strong in the presence of my Savior and I will call rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Call upon your name, keep my eyes above the Oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours. Sing that again. I will call upon your name, keep my eyes. Father, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we ask that you would take us deeper. In these times of shifting and sorting, in these times of change and challenge, in these times of valley low and not always a lot of mountains high, you are still the mountain. You are still the hill to whom we look. Lord God, we are not defined by the brokenness of our times. We are not defined by the difficulty of our times. We are defined by the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Lord God, we are defined by hope. We are defined by love. We are defined by power. We are defined by victory because we are your children. So Father, I pray that you would help us to walk upon the waters. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the waves and the winds and the gales and the hurricanes, may we always walk upon the waters. Give us the power, Lord God, to believe that we are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. Remind us, Lord God, who has called us to walk upon the waters. Remind us, Lord God, that you did not call us to drown. You did not call us to sink. You did not call us to swim. You called us to walk on top of the storms. Oh, Lord, help us to know that. Help us to remember that. And help us to remember that what you have called us to do, you have empowered us to do it. And you expect us to do it. So, Father God, keep our hearts focused upon you. Keep our minds focused upon you. Take us deeper and deeper and deeper into relationship with you. Lord God, that our faith would not be upon our prayer. Our faith would not be upon 
our thinking, our faith would not be in our faith, but our faith would be in the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings who can do anything but fail. You are sovereign. You are faithful. You are just. You are wise. You are smart. You are here. You are a God of grace. You are a God of peace. Help us to walk in you, to walk with you, and to walk for you. It's in the strong and the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise you all. Amen. 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 Wave to someone, let them know you're glad to see them, and then you can be seated. So glad that you have chosen to worship with us here this morning. Welcome to those of you who are live in our presence and those of you who are live uh, digitally. Uh, I'm glad that you are alive. How about that? Wherever you are, I'm glad that you are alive and you are watching uh, with us. And uh, again, as you said in the prayer, it's just so important that we remember that we are not defined by the difficult times. We are still defined by God. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever let the circumstances begin to determine your joy. Your joy is not dependent upon circumstances. It's dependent upon our Lord and our God, and he has not changed. Amen? Amen. 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 There's just a couple of announcements that I want to mention to you. Um, we are now accepting nominations for uh, administrative elkin, elkins, <laughs> administrative elders and deacons. Um, we need two each, and there's also we need a benevolent deacon. Uh, if you fill out the form in your mailbox, uh, there's a, in, in your mailbox, it is, I'm assuming it's also being emailed. Yes, it's also being emailed to you. So please uh, email that to um, info at livingspringcc.org. Uh, you can also just, if you have a physical copy, put it in Keith Peepenbrink's uh, mailbox. I want to remind you of that, okay? Uh, that's very important that we have your input on the nominations um, for those people who will be leading the church. This isn't just a minor little thing. Um, these people are very important in terms of the leadership, in terms of how we think and how we carry out a vision. So be prayerful in, as you think about nominating these people. Um, be prayerful in that. Just not, it's not just a popularity contest, somebody you recognize. But be prayerful and say, God, who is it that you want leading this church? Okay? Also, the children's ministry um, jump starts are happening on Monday nights for preschoolers, five, uh, preschoolers at 5.30, K through 5th grade at 6 p.m. Uh, Springs, leaders, Springs Kids Leaders will meet you in the parking lot at, um, at Living Springs to share a Bible study, a Bible story, and practice of memory verses. Appointments need to be made, so call the church office to set up your time. Also, at noon every Sunday, kindergarten, through fifth graders are invited to Springs Kids Live on Zoom uh, to connect, play a game, and learn more about our weekly Sunday school topics. Parents can check their email from Kristen Verver for the link. And there's also a Sunday school uh, at home experience you can do anytime on Sunday. All of those links are found in a weekly parent email. Contact the, uh, the office if you need some more information. Again, I know that Kristen is working really hard, Calandra are working really hard to try to keep your children engaged during this time when we can't come back together. I know they're doing some great work um, just trying to be creative in terms of uh, helping you as parents engage your children. So pay attention to those emails and utilize uh, those, uh, those resources that are available to you. Think, continue to make uh, your reservations if you want to be here in person. drive through prayer is available today. It says 1030 to 1. I thought it was at, was it 1030 to 1? Is that right? Okay, 1030 to 1. Uh, drive through prayer is available in the West parking lot, as long as it's not raining or snowing or hurricaning or anything like that. And also just want to remind you that offering, you can do your offering online through the app, the website, or drop it off. Uh, in uh, the office anytime during the day, 9 to 
there's also a black box in the back if you want to drop off your offering there. I think that is all of the announcements. Um, so why don't um, I can, I'll pray for Pastor Dave and bring him on up. Father God, we're grateful for the privilege that we have of studying together in your word. Speak to our hearts, Lord God, as we listen. Tenderize our hearts. Prepare us to receive that which you want to give us today. Pray for Pastor Dave that as he preaches today, that his heart and his mind would be clear, uh, that his conscience would be clear, that his spirit would be clear, and that he would be able to rightly divide the word of truth for those who need to hear it. It was all of us who need to hear it. So speak, Lord, because your servants are listening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear God, school's different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray. So that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day, even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning one day. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to all those of you who are here, and welcome online, folks. Uh, this is a Back to School Sunday, and uh, we're going to be, uh, I, I hope to be giving you some words this morning that you might not hear in school, but are important. And I love that little video because I think it very positively and beautifully shows the reality. It was a prayer for uh, students in challenging times. And uh, as both Priscilla and Pastor Jason shared, we're in challenging times, right? I mean, I think it's a challenging time for students. You know, I think some are kind of tech savvy and are kind of actually enjoying the online learning. And there, there, are, so many, there are others that are finding this really difficult. Like, we're not made to sit in front of a computer screen all day, and some kids I know lament the lack of uh, socialization with their friends and all the activities after school and sports and bands and all of this. You know, it's challenging. I, I, I know of one uh, young man who said, you know, I've been training all my life for this senior year of college football, and now who knows what's going to happen with that, and that could affect my scholarship and my whole future. It's a challenging time for students, and it's no picnic for teachers either. I know that uh, many of them have honed their teaching skills over the years, and now, you know, what we're, we're having to do this online and having to figure out this whole, every day, you know, trying to figure this out. I know my own wife who teaches music. She said, for the last five years, I have loved every day of school. This is what I was made for. It's fantastic. And uh, now... Uh, it's just the opposite. Every day there is challenges and technical difficulties and things that are, you know, are difficult. I, I know one uh, a teacher in our church that I was talking to, and this individual not only has to teach at home and online classes, but then their little ones, uh, little ones are figuring out how to do school online with all kinds of tears and challenges, and, and, and it, it is a difficult time for teachers. I, I have no idea how they manage all of that. And I know it's a challenge for parents. I know lots of parents that feel overwhelmed during this season. I mean, uh, most of us didn't sign up to be homeschool parents, and yet this is kind of the reality we find ourselves in. And and uh, many have to work at home or, and also manage their kids' uh, schoolwork and so on. And, and, and I can relate to that. Um, I, I'm not a particularly organized person by nature. My wife would say that's a massive understatement, but I'm not terribly organized. And now I have to organize my own life and co-pastor a church and try to figure out, you know, how to manage my daughter's education. And it, it, now, fortunately, she's 
uh, way more organized and responsible than I am, so it works out fine and we're good, but it's a challenge. I know it. And I know on top of that, uh, parents are feeling the weight of, you know, really uh, taking the lead in the spiritual nurture of their children, um, sometimes for the first time because we don't have, you know, in-person Sunday school gatherings, and, and so it puts a little bit more, you know, weight on parents. And I know some that feel inadequate and others feel, uh, you know, kind of insecure. I don't know if I'm, what I'm doing and maybe feel a sense of guilt like I'm not doing enough. And it's a challenging time for parents, and a challenging time for teachers and for kids. And uh, now many of the messages that we preach on Sunday mornings are you know, expository in nature. We work our way through a text, uh, and some are more prophetic. Like what is the word, and what I mean by that is what is the word of the Lord for this particular moment? And I know that I've been praying for the last couple of weeks, Lord, what is your word to us as we begin this new school year? And uh, what, what, is, what is your perspective on all of this? And I want you to know that if, if you're a Dutch person and really like a great deal, you're going to love this because you not only get one word, but you're going to get four today. That's, that's, that's a great deal. So you're getting four words of the Lord. And, uh, I, hope, and I think that they're going to be a little different than what you might hear in school. Now, I know that some of us might be thinking, you know, I'm not a student or I'm not a parent or I'm not a teacher, this, I don't know if this is really for me, I think I'll just go to Starbucks and get a latte. Now, if you need to go get a latte, that's fine, but I want to encourage you. You know what the Word of God says? The Word of the Lord never returns void. It always accomplishes its work. And so I want to encourage every one of us today that there is a word for you today. And so I wonder if we could even just take a moment to pause and to pray about that. Let's, let's pray together. Lord God, we're opening our hearts this morning to your words to us. We thank you for the word that you have given us. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the, the clarity and the ways that it teaches us. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that speaks personally to each one of us. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would give each of us a word, that you would speak to us. Open our eyes and, and our hearts. Awaken us this morning to your word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, four back-to-school uh, basics that I want to uh, pass along to you. And uh, the first one is uh, grace saves, not grades. Grace saves, not grades. The first word the Lord laid on my heart was a word from Romans 5. And I'm going to share the first couple verses and then share some more with you. But listen to these words. Therefore, since we have been justified by getting perfect grades in school, wait, what? We, therefore, since we have been justified through what? Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Now, I want to say something that may sound heretical to our 2020 ears in America today. Are you ready? Grades are not the most important thing in life. I know, crazy, right? Grades are not the most important thing. Grace is. It is we are justified through faith. I think of Tony, I, I love Tony Campolo. Back in the day, he used to speak on this. He'd said what he would say, one of the biggest heresies in America today is that the very most important thing is your grades or your performance if you're not in school. Your performance is the most important thing. So the most important thing is that you get really good grades so you can get into a really great college, so you can get a really good job, so you can make a lot of money, so you can buy all kinds of stuff that nobody needs uh, to impress people that you don't even like. Is that, you know, that's the American dream. And I want to ask us, is that really the most important thing? I want to suggest to us that we are all going to take a test. And the most important test we will ever take is not the test that we take in school. But one day, each one of us is going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we're not going to be based 
or judged based on our performance or our grades. We're going to stand before the King of Kings and he's going to look at our lives and how we've lived our lives. We're going to talk about grace in a moment. But grace is the most important thing, not our grades. Now, somebody's going to misquote me here. Someone's going to say, uh, Mom, you see, Pastor Dave even said grades are not that important. I did not say that. I said grades are not the most important things. Grades are very important. School is important. You know, you know, what the Word of God teaches is that whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all to the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you know, uh, do it with all your heart, working for the Lord and not for people. Whatever we do, we're supposed to give it our very best. And that's important. I love what Pastor Jason has said to his own kids. I don't care if you're the best in the school. You need to be the best in your shoes. We need to be the, you know, we need to do our very best, and that's important. But it is not the most important thing. Look at what the Word of God teaches. Therefore, we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Let me remind us of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Christianity 101, but I want to remind us. What is the gospel? The gospel is the fact that God loves us, but we all have a problem. And it is a three, small three-letter S word. And this is the problem that creates all the hatred that we see today. It's the division that we see today. It's the political unrest we see today. It's the racial unrest we see today. It's behind all of the killings on the street. It is a three-letter S word called sin. Sin separates us from God, and it is the problem, it is the human problem, and it separates us from a perfect God. Now, here is the good news of grace. I don't care how good you are or how bad you are, we cannot earn our salvation. We cannot earn our way back to God. We cannot pay for our own sins. I'm, I'm watching right now the documentary. Um, any of you see that uh, The Last Dance uh, with Michael Jordan? And I know lots of you have already watched that, and I'm finally getting around to it. But, um, okay. LeBron James fan or whatever fans you are, there is no one like Mike. I mean, he is poetry on a basketball court, just stunning in his drive, and it, it's incredible to watch this man. He's, now, if you compare me to Michael Jordan on a basketball court, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, he has a 49-inch vertical jump, and it seems like he stays in the air forever, and I can't jump over 49 pieces of paper, and I am terrible at basketball, and he is amazing. You know, on a basketball court, you know, there's a huge difference. But if you put that basketball court, or basketball goal on the moon, how much difference is there between me and Mike? I mean, it's not much difference. And that's God's standard. God's standard is perfection. And I don't care how good or bad you are, none of us can ever reach the perfect standard of God. We all, Romans 3 says, we all fall short of the glory of God. We can't get there on our own. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ came down to earth. He lived a perfect life. And as the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb of God, he stretched out his arms and he died and he absorbed all of our sin upon himself and he buried it and he rose again, break, you know, setting us free from sin to death and the devil and hell so we can have life now and for all of eternity. Jesus saves us. And his good grace is not just for the sweet by and by, pie in the sky after we die. It's for right here and now. It's his grace that saves us now. It's his grace that empowers us now for the challenges and the difficulties. The most important thing in life, folks, is not our grades. It is the grace of Jesus Christ. I think of the words of Matt, you know, but oftentimes, is this what we're teaching to our kids? You know, whether intentionally or not, what we can be quietly communicating to our kids is the most important thing is your performance. 
in school or on the ball field or with your instrument or whatever it is, that these are the most important things because this is what often our priorities show. That Christianity is, is second or third or tenth or a hundredth. You know, and if we you know, finish all of this practice and this experience and this relational thing and this social event and this game and this you know, choir, whatever, you know, then maybe we'll have time for the things of God. And we can see that our priorities, our soul, and the things of God become second and third and fourth. Now I want to remind you of what Jesus teaches in the most important message that I ever preached on, you know, the, the Sermon on the Mount. And he's talking about worry. And he's talking about challenges. And I want you to notice what he said. What he says this in Matthew 6. He said, when you've done everything else, no, no, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, what is righteousness? Being right with God. Seek first to get right with God. And all these things will be given to you. All the things that we worry about, all the things that we stress about, all the challenges that we face. He's saying, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. First, the things of God, and his promise is, you know what? He's going to take care of it. He's going to give us what we need. Grace is the most important thing. Yes, do your very best in school. Yes, it's important to do your best. But the first thing is to seek first the kingdom of God. Receive his grace and live in his grace. Say that. Receive his grace and live in his grace. Seek first the kingdom. Grace over grades. Amen? Second word of the Lord. Every trial is a teacher and every storm is a school. I want you to look at the uh, next verses. But uh, let me, before, before I share those, let me say this. Let me make a crazy prediction you will experience trials and storms during this season. I mean, we're in the midst of a pandemic. There's going to be uncertainties, and there's going to be challenges, and there's going to be setbacks, and there's going to be all kinds of craziness. You will experience trials and storms. You will. The Eisenbart family has recently experienced some very nice trials and storms. Um, my wife, unfortunately, uh, got into a terrible accident a couple weeks ago. Uh, she was driving along, and someone blew a stop sign and T-boned her. And, um, and uh, fortunately, all four of the airbags went off, and she was okay. And uh, I, it's, it's scary, and it's, and it's disturbing, but she was okay. A car, not so much. And uh, then you kind of enter into the challenges of, you know, the whole insurance game. And so we futzed around with that for a long time. And then finally we got that settled. And then we went to find a new used car. And we finally found one of those. And, and we're, we're excitedly drive it home. And then we notice that uh, the air conditioner doesn't work. And then a couple days later, the check engine light goes on. And so then we have to futz with all of that, and it's all the way back on the north side, and we have to drive it back there. And then the day that we're going to drive it back, to hopefully that they're going to take care of their car, we have one of those storms, and the power goes out, and it takes out our furnace, which is 12 years old. 12 years old. Gone. And now we have to figure out that whole fiasco. And honestly, what I'm thinking is, what else, God? Anything else? And I'm frustrated. Now, I want you to hear me. These, in the big scheme of life, are little things. These are the stuff of life, and things happen. But, you know, you add on top of that the stresses of the current season that we live in and all of the everyday normal challenges that we face day to day, and it can become overwhelming. And I know many of us have challenges much more significant and much more difficult to face. And then I read the word of the Lord for today. I want you to listen to these words. Romans 5, 3 to 5. 
Not only so, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Wait, what? Rejoice in our sufferings? I'm not feeling much joy right now, God. You'll notice that in that scripture, it doesn't say anything about feelings. It says, but we rejoice in our sufferings because we know it is an act of faith to rejoice in the future grace of God. And so the Apostle Paul says, we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance or patience and perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, God has purposes in our trials. He does. And oftentimes when we have a trial or when we have a challenge or when we have a storm, oftentimes what happens is we want to blame somebody else. We want to ignore that it's happening at all. We want to bury our heads, right? But here's the deal. I don't care where you're suffering or where your problems come from. I don't care if you did something dumb. God has a purpose in it. I don't care if it's someone else's evil that, that hurt you. God has purposes for it. I don't care if it's the devil himself who brings us challenges. God has purposes in it. Every trial is a, a, a teacher, and every storm is a school, and every difficulty is an opportunity for your development. God has purposes in your problems. And I sensed the Holy Spirit whispering to me, Dave, this is for your patience. And I hate that trial. <laughs> Don't you? But I need to learn that because I am an impatient person. And the Holy Spirit's whispering to me that there's something for you in this all, Dave. You need to learn to trust me and to be patient. And you know what? All those things work out. I don't have to stress about it. I don't have to take it all on myself. I can relax in the grace of God and that he is good and that he has good purposes in the midst of it. There are trials for sure, but they're also teachers. Now, storms are not always beneficial. I want you to hear this. Storms are not always beneficial. If we focus on the storms, on the things, on the circumstances, and that just leads to worry, and all that worry is really is meditation on the circumstances and all the negative things that could happen. That's what worry is. And if we do that, it can just spiral down, and it can get worse and worse and darker and darker. Trials don't necessarily teach us if we focus on the trials or on the storms. But if we look past the storms to the Savior, and if we focus on Him, then we can begin to experience what the Apostle Paul promised. Because we know that suffering produces some things. It's suffering and challenges and trials do something in us. God has purposes in them if we have ears to hear. I was talking to someone even this week that was focusing on it or had a challenge and was worried and was anxious. And I encouraged them, even take a piece of paper and a pencil and ask, Lord, what is your perspective on this? What are you doing in this? What are you trying to teach me in this? And listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. And God will show you if we're quiet. And that takes some practice for sure. But God has a perspective. God has purpose behind our pain. Trials are a teacher. Storms are a school. Amen? There's a third word. The most important book you will read this year, you probably won't read in school. Any wild guesses what book I'm talking about? The Bible. Unless you're in a Christian school, your teachers are probably not going to be busting out the word of God. But I want to encourage you. God is the most important book. 
And what can happen is that the Bible can get buried. And what we can begin to think is, you know, I got all this stuff and, and you know, I got all these assignments and tests and, and homework and, and projects and responsibilities and the Bible gets buried under all that stuff. And then you think, we may rationalize in our mind, you know, well, after I finish this assignment or after I finish this paper or after I finish this project, then I'll spend time with God or then I'll open the Bible or, or once I get to my break, then I'll spend time with God. And if that's our attitude, we'll never get to it. And we'll have to go and dust it off one day. And I want to encourage us, not as a have to, you have to read your Bibles, but as a get to, one of the greatest gifts that God gives to us is his word. And his word is unlike any other book. The word of God is absolutely unique because it is the very words of God. If you want to hear the voice of God, open the book and ask the Spirit of God to speak to you through it. Listen to some of these beautiful promises. All Scripture is God-breathed. Now, that's the only book that has this unique quality that it's breathed. It's, it, it's the very words, the breath of God. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. Look at Hebrews 4. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Bible is not a Greek education book. We read books in school for, for information. Okay, we can, we can learn things through it. It has information. But the Bible is for transformation. And we open our hearts to the Word of God. What happens is that the Word of God becomes like, like, like a knife. It pierces. It teaches. It challenges. It awakens us. So have you ever had that experience where you read something and you go, ooh. Any of you ever have that? You kind of read the Bible and you go, oh. Because that's for me. God uniquely speaks through His Word. Joshua 1.8. Take a look. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And then you will be what? Say it. Prosperous and successful. Now, often when our American ears hear the words prosperous and successful, we think health, wealth, and prosperity gospel, which is no gospel at all. Pastor Jason talked about this the other week. You know, the prosperity gospel, the God, the God is money, and Jesus is a way to get more of it. That is not the gospel. The gospel, in, in what prosperity means biblically, is this Hebrew word shalom. It is a sense of well-being. It is peace. It is life. It is joy. It is wisdom. It is being at the gate of, of the community and having wisdom and being having honor and respect. It's being filled with God. It's being filled with his life. That's prosperity and success, not your bank account. Keep that book of the law and you will experience it if you live it out. And, and it's, it, it's the unique source of wisdom. Wisdom comes from the heart of God, is communicated through the, through the word of God, and is impressed upon us by the Holy Spirit of God. Wisdom comes through God's word. Now, I'm not going to say a lot about this, because Pastor Jason just gave two great messages on wisdom. And he talked about how wisdom is personified. It's like, it's calling out to us. And we can heed the voice of wisdom, heed the voice of the word of God, and it will go well. And if we don't, good luck with that. It's not going to go so well, right? And today, I want to encourage us. We're not going to talk about wisdom. I want to challenge you today to experience wisdom. So today, I'm going to be issuing to us a, a wisdom challenge. And here's the cool thing about the Word of God. There's a whole book of the Bible dedicated to wisdom. Anybody know what that book is? book of Proverbs, and it just happens to have 31 chapters, and that's like one for every day of the month. And so what we're, we're kind of issuing a challenge to everyone 
at Living Springs and everyone who hears this word, we want to challenge you to experience wisdom. And that is to meditate. Now, notice I'm not saying read. Meditate on one chapter of Proverbs every day for the next month. And then we're going to give you some helps along the way. Every day, we're going to have devotions that we're going to be shooting out about wisdom. Every week for the next month, we're going to be preaching uh, through this beautiful wisdom book. But most of all, we want to challenge you to experience wisdom yourself every day. And what we want to urge you to do is to meditate on it. I love soap tool. I, I know I've shared this before. For most of you, this is review, but this is how we meditate. I love the, uh, the acronym SOAP. S stands for scripture. As you read one of those chapters, just say, Spirit of God, speak to me. And, and, and what would you say to me? And, and often God will just highlight a verse or a phrase. Write it down. And that's what you're going to meditate on. And then ask God, what does that mean? That's, that's the observation. Let, let's say you're meditating on trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Very famous proverb. Well, what does that mean? That means when I face stuff today, I better not trust myself and my own wisdom because that can be jacked up by the world, the flesh, and the devil. Maybe I should trust in the Lord. And I got to trust him with all of my heart. That means I got to trust him with my whole being, no matter what it is. And then the A is application. How do I apply this to my life? Well, the application step there is, you know, what, what would that be? You know, today, no matter what comes across my path, I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to trust you and trust that you're going to direct me in this, no matter what that is. And then to pray it back to God, simply form a prayer. And so we want to urge you to not only think about wisdom or hear about it, but to experience it. So are you ready to do this? Should we do this? Let's do this. And I want to encourage you to do that. Um, most important book that you will read uh, you're not going to find in a lot of schools, and uh, that is the Word of God. And my final word of encouragement, word from the Lord today, is to make a plan for your spiritual growth. Make a plan for your spiritual growth. Have you ever noticed that, in, particularly in good schools, they're going to have all kinds of things in place. They're going to have a great plan for your educational growth. They're going to have goals. They're going to have objectives. They're going to have some things that you're going to have to learn by the time you're done with school. And then they're going to have a strategy of how that gets done. And then they're going to have all kinds of tools. They're going to have teaching. They're going to have videos. They're going to have workbooks and syllabi and uh, all kinds of educational tools and tutors to help you along the way and all these things so that you might be educated. And I just want to ask us straight up this morning, because nobody else is going to ask you this, but I want to ask you this. Are you as intentional about your spiritual growth as schools are about your educational growth? And again, there is nothing more important than this for now and for all of eternity than your spiritual life. And I want to ask you, are you intentional about this? Because none of us kind of backs into spiritual growth and, whoa, now I'm totally mature. This doesn't happen by mistake. We need to be intentional about our spiritual growth. Look at Ephesians 5. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making what? The most out of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do you hear this? The, the author is making a contrast here between wise and foolish living. What do fools do? Fools live haphazardly. Whatever. You know, just kind of live life, and whatever hits them, hits them. Has no strategy, has no plans. But a wise person makes the most out of every opportunity. I don't want one day to pass without making a difference. I want to live with focus. I want to live with passion. 
I want to live as the scripture teaches, making the most out of every opportunity because the days are evil, the days are wicked, the days are jacked up. This world desperately needs light because it's filled with darkness, isn't it? I mean, is anyone besides me a little tired of the division and the racism and the hatred and the political garbage and all the other crap? I said crap. We need light. And we need to be filled with Jesus. So that's what he goes out and he says, know what the Lord's will is. What's the Lord's will? Don't get drunk on wine. Don't be controlled with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. That is the goal. That we be saturated, that we live a God-saturated life. That we be filled with the Spirit. Then he gives us some tools. Some practical tools, just like we do in school. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. This is worship. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks. Be grateful to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. And my, my next verse, um, for some reason I didn't put it on there, but it's submit to one another out of love for Christ. We're to do this together. So God gives us here very clear marching orders. Don't live haphazardly. Don't just kind of hope that one day you'll be more spiritually mature. Be intentional about it. And we as a church, we want to empower you to do this. This is our job. This is what we're called to do, is to empower you to become all that you're meant to be in Christ. And we care about this deeply. And so we have this kind of working vision. We are in a unique season. We, can't, we don't have a lot of the, you know, the ordinary tools that we have. So here's a working vision that we've been working on as a staff. It's a, it's a vision of shifting our focus from leading large scale in the building. I mean, we can't, you know, a lot of our normal gatherings, we can't do in the same way. So we're shifting our focus from leading large scale in the building to equipping smaller groups, partners in growth. Say partners in growth. That's what we want to emphasize during this season. Partners in growth. Households and empowering people to take charge of their personal growth and ministry. And this isn't kind of a new vision necessarily. It's a new emphasis because we can't, you know, do all the large gatherings that we always do, but this is always our job, is to empower you to do the work of Christ. And so, um, again, and this is, this is review, but we have some tools to help along the way. The biblical tools or vehicles, worship, Speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That the Greek, and I'm going to give you some Greek words. Proskuneo means to prostrate yourself. It's to worship. It's to worship the Lord and to receive all that he has. To hear the word of the Lord, kerygma. That's the preaching of the word. It is for inspiration. Worship is for inspiring us to worship God and to live our lives following Jesus. Then there's a second biblical word. Didache, it's different than kerygma. It didache, it means teaching. It means, this is the, 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 the impartation of living wise lives, living what the scripture teaches. This is teaching, didache. And we have all kinds of vehicles for that. You heard them earlier. For children's ministry, we, we have amazing, we have this beautiful, parents, beautiful plug and play Sunday school. You plug it in, you watch it with your kids, you experience it, and then you talk about it. There's the hang time at noon. There's the Monday night uh, jump start. Uh, for youth, we have junior high, high school ministries, beautiful ways to grow. For adults, because you're, stop, you're supposed to stop your spiritual growth and education when you, when you leave high school, right? That's when it begins. You know? I want to challenge us. To continue to press in, we have some great teaching. Pastor Jason's class, every Sunday morning at 9, it's a spiritual formation class uh, on uh, Facebook. I'm going to be starting my uh, marriage ministry class next Sunday, 9 a.m. It is a great tool to grow in your marriage that has impact on your family. That has yeah, It's a beautiful class, and I'd encourage you to continue to be uh, taught. And then the third part is community. Now, did you notice in that scripture earlier that I shared with you? It, it's speaking to one another. 
Sing and make music from your heart and then submit to one another out of love for Christ. You will never grow to your full capacity on your own. We need each other. And, you know, this isn't the season to start all kinds of new groups and it's just difficult to do all of that. But what we want to emphasize is you still need koinonia. Now, I don't know how... I wish I could get into everyone's skin this morning. Dave is now entering into your bodies, and I can't encourage you enough. You need someone else in your life spiritually. We need partners in growth. I want you to shout partners in growth. Ready? Partners in growth. Don't wait for this. I can't make you do this. I want to encourage you to do this. Find a partner in growth. Maybe it's within your own home. Maybe it's a, another individual. Maybe it's another couple. Maybe it's another family. We want to urge you to check in, to encourage each other, to spur each other on. I know several families that uh, watch service together, either remotely or together, and then they talk about it. And we have this great tool. I don't think you're going to be able to read that. I can't, I can't read it. I'm too old. Um, sermon discussion guide. Uh, every week we have these sermon discussion guides. And so you can simply watch service and um, then talk about it. There's a gather section. There's a grow section. And there's some dig a little deeper. So this week you have some questions to dig deeper into this, uh, this message today. And then there's some application. What are you going to do with, your, with that word today? And so great opportunity to get together, and I want to challenge you to even prayerfully consider right now, who are your partners in growth? Who will you ask? You know, can, can we do this together? And finally, uh, we have the personal devotion. And I've said this a million times. How many of you eat once a week and that's cool? You're good. How many of you enjoy eating more than once a week? Anybody? I mean, I do. I like to eat regularly. And if, if the only spiritual food you get is Sunday morning, you're going to be spiritually malnourished. And that's why we can't encourage you enough to daily take time with Jesus and even during this time, take the wisdom challenge. Open the book and see how God would speak. And don't make it an afterthought. Don't give God your leftover moment. Don't give him the leftovers of your time. Give him the first moments. Take some time to be with Jesus. I'm going to say this word, and we're going to pray together. And I've asked some folks to come and join me to pray. We're going to take some time to pray for and bless our students, parents, teachers today. Uh, but I want to encourage you with these words. Do you remember those words of the scripture that we heard just a little bit earlier? Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of out of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Now I want to remind you of those words of the Lord again. Grace saves, not grades. Every trial is a teacher and every storm is a school. Press into them and say, God, what is it that you're teaching me? The most important book you will ever read is the Word of God. And I want to encourage you not to be haphazard, but to be intentional about your spiritual growth. I want to invite those that I uh, asked. Um, I've asked uh, Pastor Rich if he would pray for the students. I've asked Pastor Robin to pray for parents. And I've asked uh, Pastor Jason to pray for teachers this morning. And so we're going to do that. <clears throat> First of all, let me just lead us. Oh, my. <laughs> Give me that. Okay. Let's join our hearts together in prayer, can we? I just want to invite each one of us uh, to open up our hearts to the Lord and to take a moment with him. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Someone this morning perhaps needed to hear that word of grace that we can't save ourselves, but it is a gift of God. 
And we receive your grace today, Lord Jesus. Your grace that saves us for all of eternity. Your grace that empowers us to live day by day. We need you. And some of us might admit even this morning that if we're honest, that our spiritual lives, our Bibles have been buried under a million other priorities. And oftentimes rather than seeking you first, it's kind of our last resort. So some of us might need to even re-up this morning and just say, Lord Jesus, I want to seek you first this year. And I want to receive all that you have for me. For some of us, we might be very focused on lots of areas of life and be very intentional about our growth, whether it's maybe physically or maybe in our workplace, but we're very haphazard when it comes to our spiritual growth. Lead us, King Jesus, into a life of depth and life. Lord, we pray that you would use us in this new year to be a light in a dark world. And Lord Jesus, now we surrender and submit uh, the students and kids of this church to you. I want to invite us can to just stand. Um, I feel like even as we go in here and as we pray for these different categories, uh, we need to remember we are the ecclesia, and we might not represent each of these categories, right? But we have the power to join with God to bind and to loose things. And so let's just enter in. We're going to pray for students, and we'll pray for parents and, and teachers, but let's just join in together. God, we are asking you Lord Jesus, for every student, God, this year, God, that you would break in with your wisdom and with your grace. God, we thank you for the unique grace you give in this season. And we know there's many students who feel like this is just haphazard and an accident and we're in this spot. But God, there is something you desire to do. Right. And so, God, we are asking you in Jesus' name that your purposes would be accomplished. Yes. God, that you would hotly pursue this young generation. God, that you would go after each one of them, whatever it is they're going through, God, in their own homes. God, we ask you that your voice would be the loudest voice in their lives. God, that you would gather them, God, and that you would speak into their lives and into their hearts, God, for all of those, God, and even ministries in the church, God, we, uh, not just this church, but other churches, we ask you, God, give them wisdom and prophetic direction, God, to go and to reach those ones that need it, God. Lord Jesus, we are asking that you would help them, God, as they do their school studies, that they wouldn't be overwhelmed with the technology and all of those things. But God, even if they are, God, help them to find themselves rooted and grounded in you. Lord, that you would be the, their, their peace, you would be the presence that they need, you would be their guide and their lead. And we ask you, God, that not one thing would be stolen from them in this season, but God, instead, that you would break in with life and light, God, into every bedroom, into every living room, into every office space, God, wherever kids are, those who are in school, God, that you would protect them and guard them and help them, Lord Jesus, to connect with you deeply. And so, Holy Spirit, we just join with you even now, asking, God, that you would touch every student, God, as they study it and as they give themselves, God, to this thing that you've called them to. Father, I just come and I lift up to you the teachers today. Father, this is a very difficult time for teachers. Lord, they have been asked to completely shift the way they have trained and taught for many years. Lord, I lift them up and I pray for wisdom. I pray for, I pray for creativity. Lord, as they seek ways to engage students that they cannot physically engage, that they cannot physically see, they can only see them on a screen. Lord God, I pray for wisdom as they figure out how to do hybrid learning and where you have two students at school and students in front of them. I pray for wisdom as they figure out how to navigate technology that maybe they haven't used before, how to navigate and to integrate uh, video and, and uh, Zoom calls and 
Microsoft Teams and Google Hangouts and Bitmojis and some stuff for some teachers, Lord God, this seems like a foreign language sometimes. I pray for wisdom. I pray for creativity. I pray for encouragement, Lord God, when they feel like sometimes they are not doing a good job. I pray, Lord God, for those teachers whose hearts are weary and, and burdened, feeling like they're not good enough. I pray for those teachers, Lord God, who are so overwhelmed that they want to give up, that they want to quit. Lord God, you told us not to get weary in doing what's good, for in the due season, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get tired, if we don't quit. I pray for that teacher right now that's considering handing in their resignation. I pray for that teacher right now, Lord God, who is staying up late at night trying to figure things out. I pray for that teacher right now, Lord God, who is so discouraged. The tears are the only thing that comes. I pray for that teacher, Lord God, right now, who is feeling the burden of not only teaching their kids their, their classroom, but is also dealing with one and two and three and four children at home that they're trying to help with their e-learning. Father, I pray for supernatural strength. Our Lord God, I pray for supernatural wisdom. I pray for supernatural encouragement. I pray for hope. I pray for healing. I pray for insight. I pray for understanding. Lord God, bless them and keep them. Cause your face to shine upon them and bless them with peace. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I stand in agreement with my brothers as we pray for the students and the teachers. And Lord Jesus, I bring before you the parents. We all know it's been such a struggle, Lord Jesus, whether their children are in school or their children are home on e-learning. It's such a new chapter for every parent, Lord Jesus, mother and father, and even the grandparents and aunts and uncles who are helping, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask for strength first and foremost to get through the days as they have to comfort their child for the frustrations of having to learn e-learning, of having to deal with, with social isolation, of having to deal with feeling like I can't handle it. Lord Jesus, we ask for strength for these parents as they embrace their children and encourage them and say, yes, you can. By the grace of God, these parents are holding on, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would guide them and lead them, Lord. Lead them and give them the words to, to speak to their children, to keep them going. Lord, your word says to trust. We trust you, Lord. Help them to lean into you, Lord Jesus, knowing and believing that you will never leave them nor forsake them as they go through this struggle, Lord Jesus. These are your children first. We know, Lord Jesus, that every parent who is helping their child get through this, this time, we have to know that they're being guided by your hand, Lord, because we can't do this alone, Lord Jesus. Help them to remember that you are walking along beside them, whispering which direction to go. And Lord, we pray that they would lay down the spirit of any spirit of pride that might keep them from reaching out for help. I pray, Lord, that parents come together to encourage and strengthen one another so that they can strengthen and encourage their own children, Lord. Lord, we speak safety over the children who are home alone, Lord Jesus, whose parents have to work. Lord, we remove guilt from any parent that feels like they're not doing it right because there is no right at this moment. There's godly, godly direction. So, Lord, bless these parents who are doing the best they can and bless those parents who feel like they're falling because we know you'll help them up. Reach out to one another, parents. Reach out. Encourage. There is no such thing as doing it alone. So thank you, Lord, that is with you and with each other that they get their strength and they'll get through this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, you're going to stay up here, pastors. Uh, we're, you're going to get blessed by a whole bunch of pastors today, all right? So let's, uh, let's receive the blessing. Don't forget the, uh, the uh, wisdom challenge starts tomorrow. And we just are, encourage you to start chapter one and uh, read and meditate on that. Now receive the blessing. And now to him who is able to do more than you can ask or even imagine according to his glorious power that's at work within you, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the power <coughs> and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and empower you to live wise and godly lives. Amen and amen.